The Jedi are real, and they are still around today, just as much as they were back then. However, they have gone in hiding, and hiding oftentimes not necessarily in our society, but within us, within our DNA. That's right. Because the Jedi that you know from Star Wars is derived from the ancient teachings and the ancient civilizations that were here. The role of the Jedi is to embody certain characteristics, to maintain balance in the universe. The concept of the Jedi has evolved over the millennia and we've taken on various forms of what we've called it. But really in essence, the Jedi are based on the ancient teachings uh, throughout various cultures and civilizations. And of the most well-known of those civilizations would be ancient Egypt. Because the Jedi are based on certain principles and they also utilize certain symbols in which were very prominent during ancient Egypt. The Jedi have been hiding among us, within us, because I believe that we come from various splices of, of DNA from various different extraterrestrial races. And uh, just like in Star Wars, how they are connected to various intergalactic races and, and there's so many different beings across the galaxy, I have experienced and seen enough to know that we are not, any of us, I don't believe, are fully just human beings. I believe we are all spliced with certain DNA and certain genetics that make us who we are. And it's not just, it doesn't just come from being a human. It doesn't just come from the genetics and DNA of a human being. And it's also manifested in many ways, this, this shift in evolution, this shift in consciousness. This great shift is happening among us, the shift in consciousness. And I believe the whole aspect of the Jedi way and what the Jedi's were, were really pushing towards was that ascension was to strive for us to align ourselves in a certain way so that we can download those frequencies and attune ourselves so that we can break free from the seals that are binding us and allow us to activate dormant parts of our DNA so that we can behave and act in a similar way that the Jedi's do and even to be able to possess the powers of the Jedi. But first we must possess and embody the principles. That's the most important. The principles are what govern the Jedi and what lead the Jedi. And I wanted to discuss further throughout this video of what it takes to actually make up a Jedi and also why the Jedi order crumbled. What caused that foundation to crumble? Furthermore, you are here for a reason. You were drawn to this video for a reason. Perhaps at one point in your past, you were a Jedi and you embody these principles. You are attempting to reawaken that which is so familiar to you. Maybe that's why you were drawn to the Star Wars series to begin with. We are entering a time where we are going to be giving access to activate those potential abilities, to activate the dormant aspects of our DNA that will give us the abilities to step in and do things that we can only perceive as a miracle, that we could only perceive in the movies. Once you understand the, the true power of activating the dormant parts of your DNA, which the Jedi utilize through various symbols and practices, then you will begin to step into that in your own life and truly begin to walk and embody the way of the Jedi. So stick around and find out if you are a Jedi yourself. I'm Cody, and I help people to activate their divine consciousness codes that will ignite their heart ablaze and open the door to limitless possibilities. So the first thing I want to discuss is, as I mentioned, the way of the Jedi, the principles go back to 
a lot of ancient civilizations, and I'm going to touch on ancient Egypt because it's what I am most familiar with, but I have also seen that there are other ancient cultures that are connected as well that utilize various symbols and practices. So in Egypt, they utilized what is known as the Jed Pillar. The Jed is personified by the four pillars. The four pillars are represented by the four cardinal directions. And furthermore, these are based on, more specifically, the story of Osiris and how Osiris rose from the dead. He was dismembered by his brother Set into 14 different parts. The number four is often depicted as a core foundational pillar. And the number four is represented through the Jed pillar here and was used as a way to transmit energy, as a way to maintain balance. So some of the principles of a Jedi that I wanted to touch on just briefly, I'm just going to list off a few things. So the Jedi, they are selfless. They have a duty to protect the innocent. They uh, follow stoicism. They don't pursue their passions. They don't allow uh, themselves to be led by their emotions. Honesty and integrity. Being grounded into your body and in the present moment. And it also said in the Jedi Code that they are forbade from killing unarmed opponents. Why not? Do. Or do not. There is no try. So the creation of Star Wars is based on many different things. And the philosophy that George Lucas draws from is really the, the fact that there is uh, something more out there. And um, he said in interviews that it was in an attempt to get people more involved and engaged in spirituality. And having this faith, this sense of faith-based reality that there's something more, that there's something higher than ourselves and that's what the whole principle is about whenever the jedis use the force and are guided by the force they use the power of their intuition and their clarity and the love that they have in order to lead them so that they can protect the people that they love and stand true and strong in what they believe and to be able to fight for those that are not able to fight for themselves. The force? Some philosophies that are incorporated into the Star Wars series are Taoism, because it's all based around balance. Especially Yoda talks about that a lot, because he talks about how uh, releasing attachment and not giving into that, because it will lead you to the dark side. He talks about really finding that balance within yourself not being clouded by your judgments not being clouded by your emotions and bringing yourself back into that balance attachment leads to jealousy the shadow of greed that is train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose Taoism is all about maintaining that middle ground in finding the balance between the light and the darkness to not run from the darkness to know that we are of the darkness but we are not controlled by it we are one with everything we are in interconnected through every single being and every single thing that there are beings that um, were called the netters that they um, these ancient deities that had access to influence the net, which governed the reality for which we are operating within. And um, the ancient Egyptians were beings such as that, that were able to, because they came from other solar systems, they came from other places, they weren't gods, they were just higher ascended beings that we, as a more primitive race here on this planet, on this plane of existence, saw them as gods because they possessed things that we had no knowledge and understanding of. And another philosophy that heavily influenced Star Wars, I believe, was Stoicism. Because it really focuses on being free from your passions. The whole way of the Jedi is about not allowing your passions to control you and not being controlled by your attachments through these passions. So they would often practice not having 
these sense of passions, which often came in the form of not engaging in relationships and things like that, in order to free their minds of the attachment so that they could have that clarity. The whole way of the Jedi was about clarity so that they could maintain that balance. This leads me to uh, my next point, which is the fall of the Jedis. And what caused it to begin with, I believe, was the fact that they weren't able to, to experience these things. The fact that they weren't able to experience one of the deepest and best parts of life itself, which is true love and Hold me. intimacy. Like by the lake on the which also goes back to, and I didn't touch on this, but Buddhism, because it really focuses on releasing attachment and, uh, you know, like a Buddhist monk, they go live in a monastery and they have to release all their attachments. They have to let go of all these relationships that they have. So they often don't have relationships or nuns, you know, or a similar thing. They remain single and devoted and abstinent to their mission, to God, to uh, the force, to, to this higher power, whatever you would consider it. But it's, it's the higher governing aspect that governs all life. Which the force really just is referring to the chi, this, this energy that governs everything. This, I mean, our bodies are like walking nuclear generators. They Another very prominent symbol that I wanted to touch on that was utilized during ancient Egypt was the Ankh. The Ankh was used as a symbol of immortality and as a uh, way to open different portals and gates, uh, just as the Jed was, just in different ways. And um, they used these symbols and these tools, not only would they use them as a tool, but they would also wear them as amulets and talismans in order to provide protection and uh, to give them aid in the spiritual realms and just energetically balance themselves, that type of thing. So the Ankh and the Jed pillar were utilized during ancient Egypt. And that is the basis of what created their reality and gave them the ability oftentimes to tap into these extrasensory abilities or to be able to connect with the net in order to influence the, the nature of this reality. These symbols act as like transmitters in order to channel that energy in and the Ankh is, I wanted to touch on the Ankh here specifically because it's based on um, having that balance between the feminine and masculine because you have the, the rod and then the loop which represents the masculine and feminine. Then you got the intersecting point between the two, the horizontal line. So you have the, the rod, the womb, and then you have where they meet. And that, that is the Ankh that was used uh, for many different purposes. I'll touch on that later. The Jed Pillar, however, represented more of a foundational structure in order to create, um, in order to create the foundation for the society and civilization, but also to be able to have and channel that energy within, to harness that foundational energy within us. Because the, uh, as I spoke of, the Jed Pillar is in relation to the Osiris story, uh, because Osiris was placed in a coffin in a tree, and that tree was cut down and made into a giant structure which housed the temple. So the Jed Pillar had the, the four pillars on it. And those were representative of the structure. Those were representative of having that foundational base in order to create and build from. Because without the foundation to, to build from, you're only going to be creating from a poor foundation, which as you likely will experience in your life, as you go through this journey, if you're not in alignment and you are on this path, especially if you're on the path of the Jedi, then it's inevitable that things are going to fall away. People are going to leave your life. Things are going to happen that's going to force you into building and creating more of this foundational structure for yourself. Because how can we ever 
want and attempt to help others to create their foundation or to give back to the world if we ourselves do not have that within us. It is imperative for us to first develop that within. And uh, the way of the Jedi, they speak of that a lot, is going within and finding the answers through your intuition and what you know to be true. Uh, I noticed a lot of times throughout the movie, whenever they have questions and they don't know what direction to go, they often say, search your feelings and you will find the answer that you seek. Use your feelings, Obi-Wan, and find him you will. So the Jedi way is predominantly about finding that clarity and, and walking that middle path so that you can maintain that balance in the universe to be a force of good, to uplift those that need help the most. And like I've touched on as well, the, the things that brought down the fall of the Jedi force was, I believe the suppression of what we want to feel inherently is the suppression of those innate things within us that need to come out, that need to be expressed. And it's part of what makes us a human being. It's part of what makes this experience here on earth so special that we're able to feel these things that we're able to experience these types of relationships. However, there is a balance in walking that path because as they speak of a lot throughout the series, fear is the pathway to the dark side. And of course it makes sense logically just thinking about it, but to actually see the events unfold in the movie and how Anakin goes from this this Jedi who, who has utmost valor and respect for the Jedi force and wants to uphold the tenets and, and be a hero for the people that he loves to converting him into the dark side. And it happened through the visions that he was receiving. I believe Chancellor Palpatine was actually instigating and creating these visions so that he would turn to the dark side, so that he would seek something else, something more than what the Jedi could give him. And he continued to implant this idea that the Jedi only have so much knowledge, only have so much information, only have so much wisdom that they can give. And beyond that, there's not much more that they could do. And so he used lies and deception to convince Anakin that through the dark side, he could actually save Padme. And I want to tie back in here what we experience in our own lives often parallels what we see in movies. And what Anakin experienced may be easily seen from a viewer's perception how, how it doesn't make sense, his decisions and, and what he says he's in alignment with, his true values. And that takes me to another point is figuring and understanding who we are and understanding the values that we truly possess. That's key in creating this foundation and going back to the foundational pillar, the, the Jed pillar, having that foundation is essential because if you don't, then you're more than likely going to walk that path of the dark side because the path of the dark side is often creates a lot of fear, creates a lot of confusion, creates a lot of speculation of things that aren't necessarily true, but invites and opens the door for people to explore that. And I do want to say here as well that the dark side is not something to be afraid of and it is not something that we should avoid because the dark side is something that we all have within us, every single one of us, our, our shadow selves, the part of us that we have suppressed, that we have pushed down for so long to keep away from the world will eventually come out if we don't find a way to express it if we don't find a way to a healthy way to express it i should say if we don't find a way to let that out of our bodies let that out of our minds let that out of our beingness if we don't find a way to do that it's going to manifest in some other way and the Star Wars series is a very good metaphor for this because what Anakin was suppressing, his love for Padme and all the things that he wanted to do in his life, 
was chained by the Order of the Jedis and what their tenets were and what they were allowed to do because he had to live a, a secret life with Padme in order to, to maintain this relationship with, with her. The final thing that I want to talk about here is in relation to what I've talked about a lot on this channel is going through that hero's journey, that pilgrimage of your soul. It is important to see that through the Star Wars series, they were on their own hero's journey. Each character had their own hero's journey. And every journey is different. Every journey is particular to that hero. And as you follow the different storylines, you get to see all the different characters unfolding and uh, the character development, who they become and why they become these characters. And I think it's very important to understand that that's something I was really analyzing. So that's an important thing to consider when watching these movies. Because each character goes through their own hero's journey. And Anakin's journey is not so different from yours and mine. Anakin, he became Darth Vader because he suppressed the things that he most wanted to feel. When his desire to, to experience this life was greater than what the Jedi Order was telling him to do, that's when he turned. Because in his mind, love was the most important. And I also agree with that, but not at the expense of killing other people and betraying the things that you most love. I believe that there's always another way out. The, the decision is always ours to make and every decision has already been made. It's not up to you to make the decision. It's up to you to understand why you made the decision. Because everything has already happened. Everything is happen happening simultaneously. There are an infinite number of parallel realities that are taking place. Because you didn't come here to make the choice. You've already made it. You're here to try to understand why you made it. In one reality, you made the decision to do one thing, and then in another par parallel reality, you made a different decision that took you in a completely different direction. So, in the Star Wars series, if Anakin decided not to betray the, the Jedi Force, he likely would have st still been with Padme. He likely st would have had his kids and would have rose to the top and been perhaps the next Chancellor and, and actually thrived. However, he decided to give in to his fear and allowed his lower nature to take over which led him to the dark side and down a path that he once he began that he couldn't really turn back of course because the Jedi were trying to kill him at that point so my point here is that it's important to not suppress what you are most feeling to express these things in a healthy way and in order to walk the path of the Jedi you must find that balance within yourself and create from that structure to maintain that everywhere that you go to have that grounded presence of being in the moment with whoever you're with with yourself even so that you can become aware of your surroundings and understand what is truly happening around you. Because if you're not able to, to take in your surroundings and you're not able to understand what is happening, then you're not going to be able to navigate accordingly. But first, we must be able to do this internally before we can do this externally. And that is what the Jedi's preach most of all, is going within first to understand who you are, to be present and grounded within yourself before you try to give back to the world. I am so grateful to be on this journey with you, my friends. I'm actually going to be going on a trip to ancient Egypt. So, I mean, I mean I'm going on a trip to Egypt and um, I'm going to be exploring a lot of these concepts and things further in the future i'm going to really delve into the ancient mysteries of what it means to 
uh, to be a Jedi and to, to harness these abilities within us because um, I believe that the pyramids hold the key. And once we activate those dormant parts of our DNA, life is never going to be the same. Things are going to take off and expand and your abilities are going to activate in a way that you've never seen before. I believe we are on the cusp of that consciousness shift of returning to the Jedi way because only you know the path that you need to walk. No one else can walk it for you. But we're all in this together to help each other, to encourage each other, and to inspire each other as we walk each other back home. So thank you so much, my friends, for being on this pilgrimage with me. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. So take care, much love, peace, love, namaste. Four is often depicted in relation to a core foundational filler. Pillar. 